Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. What's wrong? You're holding your chest for some some reason. I cough. Be- burp, burp, and it burp. didn't come out. It, and it got stuck there. That's I hate to that. Before. Sometimes it gets, it gets stuck. Sometimes, like, when the... When the when the burp gets stuck right there and it it like my mind always goes to a place of anxiety. I'm like, what if it triggered something and it threw some wiring off or something like that? It, like, it, it, like I get I get anxious. It, that's not what happens. It's happened several times. You know, it happens all the time when you're a kid and stuff. But it just happened to you. What you been eating? Like what you, the flaming hot Cheetos? Okay. Ooh, ooh. You yeah. scared it out of me. That was it. Scared you, it scared, you scared it out it of me because my mind doesn't even go there about things getting all messed up. And what am I eating? It's what I'm drinking. What is it? The Red Bull. Red Bull. <laughs> the Red Bull. I don't know, Rach. I, just, I can't. I don't know, Rach. I just can't. I just can't help it. You, need to, you need to stop with the day. Red Bull, I think. You need to, so look, is there a... Here's the thing. Is there a healthy alternative to Red Bull? Or is it just like... what? So what does Red Bull do? It makes you feel... It gives you wings, right? Well, yes, but someone did, when we talked about this kind of before, someone gave me a healthier option. Please give it to me again. I, I missed it, but I don't drink Red Bull every day. It's, it's when I'm desperate, desperate times. And it's been a long, it was a long day yesterday. It's a long day today. I don't want to drink coffee. I want something cold, but that's going to give me that fire. And that's Ooh, that's Red Jesus Bull. Christ. You know, I want to bring Whoa. I want to bring the energy. I want to bring the energy to higher learning. I gotta be honest with you. I don't want to slack. That in and of itself, right there, Red Bull should hire you. Bring that fire. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Like Red Bull, because they got Red Bull gives you wings, but Red Bull, and then all of a sudden, like I tell you, how it could happen? You could crack open the Red Bull thing, and then fire could shoot out of the top of the goddamn <laughs> thing. And it could be like Red Bull would give you that fire. Okay, so obviously we know that there is uh, war in Europe right now. We're mm-hmm. going to have somebody to come on, uh, Terrell Jermaine Starr, uh, host of the Black Diplomats podcast, is going to come over. He's in Kiev right now. Can you imagine being in a war zone, Rachel? It's crazy. No. He's in Kiev no. right now. Um We're going to talk about this a little bit later, but just so you guys know, Russian forces invaded Ukraine on Thursday. Huge, huge uh, show of air superiority. They bombed. They started bombing. There's going to be a land invasion as well. Uh, Missiles raining down on people. You've seen it covered on multiple different uh, news outlets. I have rumors that Fox had it. I'll never watch them. So I, I guess they had it. CNN has had it. MSNBC has had it. Uh, Rach, before we jump into like what's happening there, what are your thoughts on all of this? I mean, my first thought is my heart is just going out to the people of Ukraine. I mean, we've been watching what's been happening. We've been hearing about that there was a possible threat of war, that there was a threat of invasion. And it's like, we woke up today and boom, it was here. And that's just us watching it from watching what's actually happening there as these people are going through it, trying to escape. You know, there's what, almost 3 million people in the capital there. And they're trying to figure out what's what's next. So like my initial thought is, my heart is just going out to these people who are calling this place home, who this is all they know. And now they're being invaded by Russia. And they're also getting this misinformation when, you know, like Putin saying one thing. Um, I'm not sure if you saw or heard what the Ukrainian president said. He had a very impassioned speech Zelensky, about yes. the, the misinformation that's being put out there, pleading to the Russian people to recognize what's going on and how Ukrainians are under attack and all they want is peace and stop paying attention to the, the, the what they're seeing on the media and to listen to what he was saying. It was so sad to hear him talk about that, pleading, pleading for the sake of his people and his country. So I, I just, I can't even imagine that that's my initial thought to answer your question. Right. So we're going to have Terrell on later uh, to fill in any gaps. But 
I'm going to give my, for anybody that's asking why this is happening, um, and I'm going to ask him that very, that, that question when he comes on so that he can actually give like an actual academic answer to it. Um, mm. But for anybody that's asking why, I'm going to give you a dime store analysis of what's happening right now. So Vladimir Putin, uh, from what I can understand of this situation, having followed it for a little while, is, is invading the Ukraine for two reasons. One of them, he purports to be cultural. The other one, he purports to be, we we know it's political, right? It's geopolitical. Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. cultural reason is Vladimir, Vladimir Putin has said that the Ukrainians and the Russians are one people, that they are essentially one people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Going back centuries and centuries, there, were actually, there was actually time where uh, I guess Kiev was actually a more popping joint than Moscow was, right? <laughs> It's uh, okay. Kiev and the Ukraine has been a part of Russian imperialism, and that's what it is, imperialism, for a very, very mm-hmm. long time. Okay. Um, I want everybody to picture it like this. So Rachel is from Texas. I am from Louisiana. All right. So let's talk away, talk about cultural diffusion and kind of the way it might be working in Russia and the Ukraine from, from Putin's perspective or for people that are hawkish uh, to that region. So Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans... Uh, cut off New Iberia, all of those places. They are steeped in Louisiana culture, right? Mm-hmm. Those are the places in Louisiana that we eat in the gumbo and we might feed Rachel some alligator and all of that stuff, right? The right. further west you go, the more that culture sort of thins out a little bit. It's still there, but by the time you get to Lake Charles or you go a little north, you get to those border places. Well. Now they might as well be Texas. They're a little less Louisiana than what we are, right? Uh-oh. It's true. They, they might be offended. I'm just, I'm just being saying, honest. You know, I they got might northern, be offended. I got northern Louisiana family. There's a difference. And I got to be honest with you. I don't <laughs> eat their gumbo. There's they a, they don't eat, my, my family doesn't even make gumbo from northern Louisiana. <laughs> I don't think I'm northern Louisiana family. I don't eat their gumbo. So <laughs> uh, that kind of is the dynamic that exists in Ukraine. Not really. But kind of when you get to eastern Ukraine, you're getting closer to Russia. And as you get closer to Russia, you have people that actually speak Russian and not Ukrainian. You have actually more support for Russia. You have more cultural diffusion there with Russia the closer you get there. Right Mm -hmm. now, as far as the other places that are central and western Ukraine, the the places that largely elected Zelensky because there was when Zelensky, Zelensky, President Zelensky was elected. There was a Russian propped up uh, candidate as well. That got lost. Right. All right. The West was favorable to Zelensky. Uh, he won big, by the way. He won like 70% of the vote, if I'm correct. He won big. But anyway, so there's there are different cultures based upon where you are, right? Just like there mm-hmm. would be in Texas and Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Because of that, Putin feels emboldened to claim those lands that are hold, held by rebel separatists for Russia. Right. Right. And what he's now trying to do is, from a cultural situation, penetrate deeper into to, to Ukraine to expand Russia's cultural influence on Ukraine. He will want the whole place to be aligned with Russia culturally. Mm-hmm. Politically, it's very interesting. Politically, if the Ukraine, as a country, were to, say, join the European Union or join NATO, which has been out there in the ether, then what that essentially has is the influence of the West pushing further into Russia, mm-hmm. which obviously he doesn't want. Because in the back of Vladimir Putin's mind, what he really wants is to reestablish the Soviet Union. Correct. He wants to pick up Soviet states. But the history between Russia and Ukraine is even more interesting because of this. Let's just let's not start from centuries and centuries ago. This is some stuff that I dug up and, you know, everybody out there has access to this information. But the Ukraine was once a nuclear power when the Soviet Union fell. They had a bunch of nuclear weapons to lob at people. They gave their nuclear arsenal up to Russia in exchange for Russia recognizing their sovereignty Mm -hmm. and Basically, ever since they made that deal with Russia, Russia's been fucking with them. Russia right. doesn't want another. Russia doesn't right. want another NATO company, another NATO country being involved. Russia wants to keep 
uh, like NATO's influence away from the Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And as time goes on, it seems like naturally Ukraine is identifying more with the Western world. They're Absolutely. identifying more with Europe and with the United States uh, and with other countries that are in NATO. So, you know, after what happened in Crimea uh, in 2014, there were these things called the Minsk Accords that were supposed to lay out a way that Russia and the Ukraine could operate with one another um, and sort of not f- piss on each other's legs. But the Russians just never adhered to what was what was signed. And the United States, to be honest with you, was part of the countries that were involved in making that truce happen. So mm-hmm. Putin just is a bad actor in all ways when it comes to the Ukraine. When it comes to the Ukraine, it seems like his political aspirations and his cultural aspirations to culturally uh, sort of subjugate the Ukrainians and then also to politically have them strategically where he needs to be override any kind of concern that he would have about starting a war. Yeah. Um, starting a world war. Well, it almost feels like this has been a long time coming. Cause so sure, it yeah. seems like he's been waiting for his moment to strike, to come in. And that's kind of what we're seeing happening now. And I think uh, it, it's, it's interesting because I more so, I feel like have educated myself on this very recently. And I feel like a lot of us in the United States, you kind of hear things that are happening. You hear a name, you hear an issue, but you don't really know the history of it. And I'm still not even that well versed in the history of it, but now it's all coming to a head. And, and, and you, I don't know if you saw the meme, there's a meme that the Ukrainian, I don't know if it was the government put up where you see a picture of Hitler stroking the face. It's a cartoon stroking the face of Putin, almost like you're doing a good job. You know, like almost like well done my son, because the way that he is trying to invade Ukraine or is invading Ukraine, I think there was something like two, almost 200,000 Russian troops at the border ready to go into Ukraine. I mean, now they're already invading. And as we're, I think I just saw a report that they're taking, they took over the airport or one of the airports near the city. Um, they're, they're, well, anyways, I, I just, the way that he's, he's, he's wanting to exert his power and to expand the Russian government and take back what he believes is Russia's. We've seen it before. We've seen it before. And that's the scariest part. And it's so it's not when you hear the World War Three being thrown out there, it's not being thrown out in a flippant way. It was before our time, but we've seen this happen before. Yeah. So I do want to talk. about. So I want to talk about a couple of differences in terms of the World War Three thing, because I don't want people to get hysterical. I'm not saying that it can't happen. It definitely can happen. It definitely can happen. But. A lot of Vladimir Putin's, and this is another way that Vladimir Putin is very similar to Donald Trump. I don't know what the Russians have on Donald Trump, but this is the way they're similar to Donald Trump. Vladimir Putin's very existence is, uh, it relies on him being seen as this Russian strongman, as this unflappable sort of patriotic Russian autocrat who squashes everything that is beneath uh, or that stands in the way of Russia becoming the huge, huge global influence that it once was. And that's kind of the way that Donald Trump also viewed uh, America, right? He viewed, hey, we are absolutely pro-America. Fuck everyone. We'll do whatever we have to do in order to make sure people know that we are the number one dick swingers in the entire world. And Mm -hmm. for a lot of people who in in Russia, and I'm not sure what what the poll numbers over there would be, for a lot of the people who who love Vladimir Putin, this is the kind of thing they would expect him to do. As far as the World War III thing, here's the deal. There's a couple of things I want people to remember about World War III when you talk about World War III. Number number one, the United States stayed out of World War III until they were directly attacked. All right? So Pearl Harbor, the Pearl Harbor attack got the United States into the world. Now, I would argue that if you've seen 6 million people, 12 million people being slaughtered in Europe, that you should probably get involved in the war. (laughs) And and, and they didn't. The Holocaust was allowed to happen and other atrocities were allowed to happen before the United States found its way into World War War II. I do not think that the United States, I'm not think, the United States will let this go on 
and do nothing but impose economic sanctions onto Russia uh, if no NATO member country is directly attacked. If no NATO member country is directly attacked, directly attacked, I think the United States won't lift a finger. And I, you don't have mm-hmm. to conjecture about that. They've said they're staying out of it. They're staying out of it. Um, obviously, when the, when the shells start flying, Terrell could talk a little bit more about this. You never know what's going to happen. But I would say that the concern about it this being World War III is that's the concern because we're human beings and we're afraid, right? There are other concerns that go first. We've imposed sanctions on Russia right now that are going to make life in the United States a little bit harder. You have to understand, the, the Russia right now supp- supplies Europe with a significant amount of their energy and their oil, yeah. right? So when sanctions come to Russia, and we have to sanction them, we're sanctioning Russia's, Russian banks. We are putting pipelines between Russia and Germany on hold. We're doing all, when we sanction Russia and isolate Russia, the effects of this war are going to be felt by the people in the Ukraine in a very real way, as we're going to see a tremendous loss of life and a potential refugee crisis as people from the Ukraine make their way into Poland, make their way into other places like that. And we have to make sure that we're like as NATO aligned countries, we have to make sure that we're prepared to accept those refugees. But more to the point, if you're wondering how it's going to affect you here in the United States, things are about to get even more expensive than they already are. And that is a trifle compared to what Terrell will be going through in the Ukraine and what other people will be going through the Ukraine. But I want people to understand, like, in order for us to act against Russia, and this is where sort of having really good political dialogue between the president of the United States or an administration and a constituency is very important for us to sanction Russia. It's going to hurt us. So. If right now you are putting I am with the people all of, of, of the Ukraine up on your Instagram or on your social media or any place like that, you need to understand that there's a there's a there's a cost and we all should be with them. And the only weapon we have against Russia short of a full scale nuclear war, which I can guarantee you, unless he's fucking nuts, which he might be not even Putin wants because nobody can spend money if they're ash right but what i'm what i'm saying is just know that part of your support for the ukrainian people is going to have to be having the wherewithal to have your life a little bit tougher because of the sanctions that we implement on russia those sanctions are going to come back and they're going to pop up at the gas pump they're going to pop up at walmart they're going to pop up places like that and just remember that this is the only weapon we really have. Not only to that point, this is the last thing I'll say before Terrell comes, but there's a situation with China and Taiwan where it's almost identical to the, <laughs> to the situation going on between the Ukraine mm-hmm. and, and, um, and, and Russia. Russia. If the Chinese attack Taiwan or try to annex Taiwan because their homeboys, the Russians, have done this in the Ukraine, if that influences them to think that they can move and the world community won't move, you have a real fucking problem then because that is a direct ally of the United States and it would look completely gutless if the United States did not have some sort of military response to a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. So this is like a world weird time. Three. Man. <laughs> you said, you Stop think, saying it. Stop I'm saying just it. Words, saying, like you just, words of spirits, Rachel. Stop. I'm just, stop. I'm just saying. The, you just describe. You just added two more countries to the mix. One of them being an ally of ours. <laughs> where you know what I mean? Like then that that brings in the West, the Western world. I it just it world. It, it's listen. You cannot ignore what's happening. You need to be paying attention before you wake up one day, and that's what's going on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's tough. Okay. okay, that's enough out of me. I, now I will be completely proven wrong because we have a real <laughs> expert that's coming on. The show. Uh, me and Rachel don't know shit. Well, actually, she knows. No, you I know. Don't know. You I, know. I don't know a fucking thing. You know. Uh, we got Terrell Jermaine, Jermaine Starr, who's coming on the show right now. Y'all, from Kiev. Can you fucking believe it? No. no. From Kiev, on the other side of this break. Do not miss it. We are 
going to be joined by a guest to help us make sense of the reason why things are tense in the world right now. This gentleman's name is Terrell Jermaine Starr. He uh, is the host of the Black Diplomats po- podcast. He also is someone who is in Kiev right now. He's in mm. Ukraine. Um, he's a senior fellow, non-resident senior fellow with the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Uh, he publishes weekly episodes on the Black Diplomats about Ukraine, Russia, and Eastern Europe. And he is going to join us right now to help us contextualize and help you contextualize what is going on in Ukraine right now. I know that you guys are aware that Russia has invaded Ukraine and there is war in Europe uh, for the first time in a long time. But the questions are, why? How is it affecting the people of Ukraine right now? And for you, listen to this podcast, what it's going to be the effect on your life. All right, guys, very tense times. We told you about it in the world right now. War has found itself in, in Europe. Uh, Putin's army there in Russia has invaded the Ukraine. Uh, look, a lot of you guys have questions about what's going on, why this is happening, and what the situation in the ground in, in the Ukraine is right now. We are lucky enough to be joined by someone who is currently in Kiev. Uh, where it's in the middle of the night. This gentleman's name is Terrell Jermaine Starr. He's a non-resident senior fellow with the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. He is the host of the Black Diplomats podcast. He publishes weekly episodes about Ukraine, Russia, and Eastern Europe. There's no one better to talk to right now than this brother. We are happy that he is joining us today on Higher Learning. How you doing, man? Hey, listen, um, like I said, you know, a cruise missile hasn't shot me down yet, so... You know, it's cool. I mean, dozens of people have been killed right now. This country has been undergoing massive uh, airstrikes. And um, my colleagues, Ukrainian, I'm, I'm here with the Ukrainians. My colleagues are um, bunkered down uh, in metro stations. And so it's it's a very rough ride. But um, Black Jesus is taking care of me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm good. I feel you. My first question is, for a lot of people that are out here, they're, they're scared. You saw it was trending on Twitter, World War III, and people are obviously going to uh, be frightened and concerned whenever lives are being lost and whenever there is a full-scale invasion like this. For people that are asking why this is happening, people are wondering what precipitated this, what's going on over there, what would you say to them? Listen, I've been I've been focusing on this country since 2009. I'm an expert in this region. I've been studying Russian. I'm taking Ukrainian this summer. Um, I've been studying Russian imperialism. There is no concrete reason why any of this is happening. Uh, There is no military um, reason. Uh, Ukraine has never threatened Russia. Uh, Politically, Russia, Ukraine has never tried to prevent Russia from advancing its economic interests. So that's the first thing. But um, what has precipitated this, again, in short, is the fact that uh, Ukraine wants to be an independent country. Um, Going back to Catherine the Great, um, some people would say, um, you know, Peter the Great. uh, This this country has never been seen as, as an independent, right? These people have never been seen as independent. And and Van, um, I think it's important for me. I'm happy. The reason I decided to stay up so late to talk to you is that I think that you would appreciate me speaking from this standpoint. Um, he he treats these people like white trash. And, you know, a lot of people would think that, oh, these, you know, Ukrainians and Russians, they, they're just a bunch of quote unquote white people. And, you know, and you would think they're one. And that makes sense within the American context. But over here, it's very different. Um, Ukrainians have never been a group of people that Russia, whether it be through the the, the, the Russian Empire or through the Soviet Union or the current Re- Russian Federation as one that has its own individual agency. And when Putin recognized the Donbass and Luhansk regions, which are in the eastern Ukraine, you know, the oblast, right, which essentially would be states in the U.S., right, um, he basically said that this is an illegitimate state. He said that Ukraine, um, it needs to be quote unquote denazified. And so saying that this is a country that is full of Nazis. And so 
I don't know if you all, you know, we're used to these dog whistles that are applied to Chicago when a politician wants to run for office and say that we're going to be tough on crime. And what do they do? They point to Chicago, right? Stereotype Chicago. Um, that is essentially what Putin is doing. Um, Ukraine is Putin's Chicago. Uh, that That's what he does. He And, and what's happening right now is Putin's uh, Ukraine theory is very much a version of Putin's um, racialized, um, mythical um, 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 threat in that he, he, he sees a country, manufactures a problem that doesn't exist, um, and he, he, he declares it a problem that needs to be taken out very much how people, uh, you know, white Southern uh, uh, um, legislators across America uh, have identified, you know, critical race theory as a problem primarily because it dares to challenge, you know, systems of sure. oppression. And Putin's, and, and I'm sorry, and Ukraine's existence as an independent nation, in his mind, challenges the territorial integrity of Russia. But in fact, what it does is that it challenges his territorial integrity, because what would happen is that if there is an independent Ukraine at his border, then his fear is that Russians themselves will understand what that independence is like and what accountability is like, and that would overthrow him. Look. Can I ask you this? Because I, I definitely want, I know we're, we've been getting a lot of questions from our listeners asking to, to seek understanding about what is going on. And so you mentioned something about Putin and the way and the threat he feels from the Ukrainians. Ukraine, the, Ukraine is such a small country compared to Russia. Why is it that he feels so threatened specifically. It's not the only country that's bordering Russia. Why does he feel so threatened by this country, country specifically? If you can give the historical context maybe to that, because they have a deep rooted history. And um, what does he want out of this invasion? If you can answer that well, as well. Well, well. well, thank you, Rachel. You're, you're asking the right questions that most people aren't asking and they should ask. Um, that's a very key question. And so, um, you know, when you look at Russia's border, because I've traveled across the, the, the so-called former Soviet Union states, so that means Central Asia, right, Tajik, you know, like to, to uh, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, right, Central Asia. Um, I've been to the Caucasus. Um, I've been to the Baltic states, for example. What makes Ukraine so unique, right, is, um, you know, the way you have to, you have to look at this through colonialism, okay, and more specifically through Slavism, right? Um, Ukraine is a Slavic country, right? Belarus, Belarus is a Slavic country. And so the way, you know, he looks at Georgia, it's like, okay, in 2008, and I was also in Georgia in 2008 when Putin, when Putin invaded, yeah, they're, you know, they're caucus people, right? But the thing about, um, the, the thing about Ukraine is that it is, they, they're Slavs and he has decided, okay, there's this thing called Kiev Rus, right? You know, the, the Kiev Rus, which is considered to be, you know, the, the mother of, of Slavic society, right? And so what he does, it says that, you know, we have this united history. So Kiev Rus is the mother of, of, of not only Slavic society, but Russian civilization but he's doing this going back to your question Rachel um because the because Ukraine means something very particular in his own reimagined sense of history that the Caucasus don't that the because it, that the Central Asians don't because the Central Asians they're Asians right you know they're not Slavs and so they are supposed to be a, you know think about Putin not, I'm sorry Putin think about Hitler because Putin and Hitler are very similar um Hitler um, he made the Poles as slaves, for example, and he killed Jews, right? Because Jews were not a part of his world order, right? But everyone else, like the Swedes, um, the Finns, for example, they could be a part of the Aryan race, right? And so even though he subjugated them and murdered them, that's how Putin thinks about Ukrainians. But the problem is that when you don't get in line, if you do not embrace my term, my definition of Slavism, Rachel, I'll kill you. And that's the reason what uh, that, that, that Putin is doing is specifically to Ukrainians. He's supposed to be, he, he, the, Ukra the, the Ukrainian is supposed to be a part of this Aryan, you know, this, this, this semi-Aryan framework of Hitler. They're not getting in line. 
and they're not doing and because they're not doing that his only response is mass murder which is irrational is 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 it's maddening but so was hitler right hmm. last question for me you're there right now in the ukraine mm -hmm. what are things like oh brother man listen um you know five five a.m in the morning we um you know that's when they that's when the airstrikes hit and um we um we've been hit with airstrikes throughout this throughout the day um and no one knows where it's safe to be quite frank with you and people are asking hey can you leave can you go out it's like listen if we were to leave and try to leave you know and try to um, head out the city for one um it's just bumper to bumper traffic and um you try to withdraw money it's hard to do because everybody went to all the banks um i'll i can i'll just try them around to see if i can withdraw money but um good luck with that uh also you hear sirens all day in the airspace um is, is closed off right now so anybody so any type of noise that you hear in the air those are military jets right now and mm -hmm. the thing about it <laughs> is that we don't know if that's a ukrainian jet or a russian jet that can hit us in any moment because civilian um buildings have been hit here it's very real that even as i'm talking to you right now whether it be intentional or not that a missile can hit this place and blow it up. I mean, that that's just the real, that's just the reality that we all are facing here. It's it's very terrifying. I would not wish this on my worst enemy. And I'll finally say that, you know, I, I would encourage your listeners to really reflect deeply about safety and what that means and about militarism, because the same fear that I, you know, I'm telling you when I, I'm a journalist and this is the first time I've had to deal with writing through war. And I, I was ashamed to say it, you know, early on, but I was scared, man. You know, I, I felt embarrassed to say that I was scared, mm. but as throughout the day, I'm not ashamed to say it anymore. I've learned to work through it and I'm doing the work that needs to be done, but I was terrified because no human, this is not normal. Uh, no human being should ever deal with this. And I can't help but wonder, back in 2003, when America invaded Iraq, that's how Iraqis feel, you know? And that's the thing. And so I just, I think it's important for us to reflect on this. The thing about Ukraine is that Ukraine is not uh, America, you know, like we are, uh, we're, we're America is not the nemesis of Ukraine in this instance, but there are plenty of countries that have been in the situation where I am and people have been where um, these Ukrainians are, where they feared a, a, an American invasion based on a lie, because we all know what happened in Iraq is based on a lie. It's just, it, 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 you know what I'm saying? And this is the same thing. And so as a black person, as much as I am here fighting for what's right here as a journalist and also just, this is my livelihood, I, I can't help but to have, have us have a larger conversation about what role should our government play uh, or our military play in world affairs? Because people here in Ukraine are, are, are asking Russians, are you okay with this? I'm pretty sure Iraqis or Iranians, right? Because they've been mistreated by the United States. You know, Iranians are saying, hey, Americans, are you okay with this? And it just shows you how global affairs impact us all. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a fellow American and, you know, if I were back in the States, we would be talking about this from a, you know, from the U.S. perspective. But like, I just want us all to really think about the fact that foreign affairs is impacting us all. And, and, and we can be in situations where we're comfortable in the United States. And I say we and I say we because I'm not in America right now. But, you know, as an American citizen, truth be told, if I get across the border, my passport takes me anywhere. Right. And so we can, it's important for us to challenge this imperial state that America is because America and Russia are both imperial countries and their peers. Let's just be clear about that. Okay, real talk. And, and, and so I, I just want us to really think very carefully and think very critically about the fact that we should be against all imperialism. We should fight Putin because at the grand scheme of things, he's not gonna stop with Ukraine. Hmm. Here's my last question. Um, 
you said you talk about the United States getting involved. And I know a lot of people are wondering how this will not just affect the United States, but also whether or not we should get involved when it's clear that Putin has made threats for any country that helps out the Ukraine at the moment. Um, do you think this is the start since this is being thrown around? Do you think this is the start of World War Three? Yes. Um, and, and the thing about it is that. You know, we are used to America in many instances being the aggressor. In this case, you know, America isn't. And um, I know people don't want to hear World War III, but I think when people put their heads in the sand, that's when we get surprised. Um, you know, and, and again, like I said, I, I've studied this region my whole life. I feel like I understand this region. I feel like I understand Russian imperialism and its activities better than most people. I, I, I'm not saying that just to be arrogant. I'm just saying that as a fact. Um, America did nothing to trigger this activity at all. If it did, I would be the first person to tell you. It's not America. Putin, you know, why this should, uh, why Americans should care about this, why Black folks should care about this, is because anytime you're dealing with a dictator and Putin, um, this type of behavior that he has, to, if, if Putin has no problem doing this to his own people, what do you think he will do to us? He has threatened the possibility of nuclear weapons. Like he, he has said this. And mm -hmm. so he has no limits. In, the, in Russia, if you protest, you can be thrown in jail for years just for holding up a protest sign. It is encoded in Russian law. So, you know, yes, this is a very, this, this, and here's the, some specific examples why. And war mistakes happen. So any of these missiles that are hitting Ukraine that would land in Poland could automatically trigger a NATO response. Automatically, by a mistake. Okay, and here's the thing. Mm -hmm. How do we know that that missile that was intended to hit Lviv in Western Ukraine, but mistakenly entered Poland, was a mistake. How do we know that? Because the thing about it is, and that's the thing about war, why it's so ridiculous. You know, it's, it's kind of like giving a monkey a gun almost, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, you know, we, we don't know what's gonna happen. And so Putin has been so menacing that if I were somebody in the state, you know, in, in the White House, if I were the national security advisor and the missile would have hit Poland, I wouldn't consider it a mistake. I would consider that this mofo really wants to smoke and he's lost his mind and we got to give him lead, you know, and so mm -hmm. that that and, and, and so that could easily trigger it. And, you know, in order some, sometimes in order to pursue peace, you have to use force. Um, and, and that's not something that I want. That's not something that, that Biden has voiced. I've listened to every single thing that Biden has said about Ukraine. I've seen the actions. This is not Iraq, right? This is not some reckless um, move into that. I think that to a certain degree, the, the America have, has learned its lesson to a certain extent, right? But, you know, I, I, Putin has never entered these negotiations with good faith. He had no intention of respecting Ukraine's sovereignty. You're dealing with a bad actor that wants to expand borders. And so hypothetically, if Russia were to take over this country, which is not really possible because they don't have the, they don't have the troop size and the numbers. But if they were to do that, there's nothing to stop him from moving forward into Poland. Nothing at all. And so if I were Amer the Amer average American citizen, I would be great. I would be very much concerned, Rachel. I'll be, I, 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 you know, I, you know, Van. I would be very concerned because you're dealing with someone in Putin who is encouraging a war. Because what's I'm, listen, I don't know if either of you have been in a country that has been under massive airstrikes. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it it really is. I don't think you understand what it means to have a bomb to 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 be falling. You know, a few cities away. It, it I don't. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. And Ukraine did absolutely nothing to deserve this. And because they did absolutely anything to deserve this, then you have to ask yourself, how do you negotiate with somebody who chooses to do that? And you can't, unfortunately. You just can't. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's real Jermaine Starr.
We will be checking back in with you, brother, as this situation continues to develop and unfold. We want you to be covered and blessed. Yes. Uh, and we're praying for your safety and also that you continue to do the work that you're doing. Thank you for joining us today on Higher Learning. Thank you Thank so you. much. Anytime y'all want me on the show, y'all got me. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate yeah, you. Man. Okay. Uh, I actually prayed a little prayer for the brother to cover him to make sure he's okay. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. You can see it's weighing on him. I can't, on his, I mean, oh this is God. a man who has dedicated his, his time, his life yeah. to what's going on over there. And now he's in the middle of a war. I, I can't even imagine close, trying to close my eyes at night, not knowing, you know, what the, what the day is going to bring or what's going to happen in the night. Oh, my heart is just, is with him and all the people over there right now. Okay. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that happened with the Megan and Tory situation, but we might be able to have get DJ Academics on the podcast to talk about this stuff. Rachel is shaking her head. Rachel, Rachel. As I did the last time he was on. As I did the last time. <laughs> right, right. So cool. if we're, if. He, Come on. He, 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 he can't stand that. He did it last 15 time. 15 minutes. He was here. And he'll uh, and he'll come on the show, and then we can pepper him with the questions that we have because Act was wilding yesterday. I'm not fucking bullshitting it. It was all fucked up. It was all fucked up. But I want to talk to you about something uh, because you know you're you're you care. I think you know what, Rachel. I'm gonna be honest with you, Rachel. What? I feel like you care more about sports than you care about anything. Sports corner where we talk about bouncing balls. Yeah, sports <laughs> corner. Let's get it on. I'm gonna be honest with you. About sports more than anything? Where is this coming yeah. from? <laughs> you cause you because when we talk sports, that's really when like you light up and get I mean you get passionate about a whole bunch of things. But you love talking I sports. I like sports. I like sports. You like sports. And you were so upset that you didn't get a chance to hoop in the celebrity game. I thought about that. <laughs> I was like, we, well, it I was just like, we really was just insult to injury when they let Matt James do it. You know what I mean? If it if if it can't be one of us, don't let any of us. But, the, but they let True. Matt in. They let, let Matt, Matt in. And he titty tapped. It was very unfortunate. <laughs> um, I saw something yesterday. I want to talk about something. I saw something yesterday that I was actually shocked because I don't really know. And look, guys, I'm ignorant. You guys know this all the time. The Reddit knows. I'm ignorant. So I saw something uh, yesterday that really, that really got me. Sue Bird, who is one of the greatest athletes of all time. Okay. She plays for the Seattle Storm. She's going to play for the league's veteran minimum mm -hmm. in the WNBA. She mm -hmm. can play one last year. She's taking a pay cut. So it could be her possible last year in the WNBA. The league's veteran minimum in the WNBA is $72,141. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This then inspired me to go to Twitter. Okay. I went to Twitter. And I said, I thought that that's bullshit that Sue Bird should have to play for that. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. Sue Bird has tons of endorsements. She's played in other leagues around the country. Sue Bird is rich. She's playing in the WNBA because players want to play in their home countries because it means sure. a lot. Leagues are prestigious. But when I see that number of $72,141, I start to think, is the WNBA in trouble? Like is the is the WNBA that's for a major American sports league to even have your vet minimum at that. That's that was shockingly low to me. I wouldn't think that it would be seventy. What did you think it was? Because I feel like we've talked before about the disparity in pay and how low it is, particularly in the WNBA. I mean, yeah. I. I, I, I wasn't thought, shocked when I saw seventy two thousand. I wasn't. I, I would have thought it would have okay. at least been six, because the, the 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 league minimum in the NBA is pretty low. I think it's like three hundred thousand. I would expect it to at least have been six figures. I would expect it to at least be a hundred grand. So I, I tweeted something, and got my ass kicked for the tweet because <laughs> you can't. It's just I got my ass whipped for this tweet. This is the tweet, and I want to, okay. I want I want everyone to see. We can what name this the tweet? I didn't see you. I didn't see this tweet. What did you say? I got my ass kicked for this tweet. This is the tweet. The tweet is, what do you think is the one thing that is holding the WNBA back? Hold No, this is what I said. What is the major thing 
that is holding the WNBA back. That was the tweet. Now, got my ass kicked for the tweet. People said the tweet was misogyny, which I don't understand how, but let's go with it. Once again, me, I've gone from up. I'm, I thought I was 5% misogynist. I think Reddit has let me know that I'm 75%, so I'm going up to 75 First of all, is there anything wrong with that tweet? And do you have an answer to the question? What do you think? Is there anything holding the WNBA back? That was What's your tweet. the major thing holding the WNBA back? That was my question. And that's the question that I'm asking right now when like that I that I'm wondering when I see the Sue Bird story. I don't think that your tweet is misogynistic. I didn't gather that from the tweet. So let me just say that. Um, you're asking me the question, what, what is the major thing holding back, holding it back? I mean, I guess you would have to say the viewers, right? It's not the players. It's not the game itself. It's the fact that people don't support the WNBA or watch it to where you can justify it with ticket sales, viewership. You know what I mean? And, and get the sponsorship up to, to I, I would think that that's why they're saying that they're being paid at a, at a extremely, extreme lower rate than the dub. I mean, than the NBA. So who's holding it back? It's us. Right. Right. So why? So, okay. That's actually the right answer. I mean, like the people, <laughs> well, no, no, no. What I'm you saying can't is blame that, it like, on that's, anybody but us. Well, no, I've never heard it put like that before. Like, I, I really haven't. I, I've heard people say a lot of things, but I've never really heard it put. I've never heard it. I, I've never thought about it. That like it's it's actually our fault that the WNBA is it. Yeah. I've, okay. So I guess the next question is why don't people watch it? That is a great question. I don't. To be honest, I don't really watch the NBA. I will. I watch. I I watch other than football, which we can talk about that later. But I watch football all season. The NBA, I watch during the finals mostly. WNBA, I watch during the finals. Baseball, I watch during the World Series. That's kind of how I, I do things because yeah. I just don't have time to dedicate it. That's me personally. Everyone else, I don't know. What I have appreciated in more recent years is seeing NBA players go out and support WNBA games. I've actually enjoyed seeing them on the sidelines of them tweeting about it, posting about it, showing their support, showing that they're there and they enjoy the games. And as NBA players, they're into what they're bringing to the game. It's basketball. You know, I went to the last game of the Sparks for their last season, had a fantastic time watching the game. I mean, it was an amazing game back and forth. It was against Seattle. Matter of fact, it's a good game. The Sue basketball Bird was great. on the court. Sue the basketball's the court. great. The basketball is um, legitimately great. They saucy. But they I don't also, think they, that there's they enough awareness the about it. You know, yeah. when I worked, I was an intern for the NBA and our, we had, the interns had a project for the end of the internship. They made y'all live in the projects? Nope. We Damn. had a project at the end of the end. They made us find our own That's living because they ESPN. barely paid us. They put but, y'all, y'all in the projects. <laughs> but they, uh, the ESPN it was, homes. <laughs> It was about, it was, it was not ESPN. It was marketing. (laughs) Our project was, was creating a marketing campaign for the WNBA, which we then presented it to the president at the time of the WNBA. This was back in 2007, trying to bring awareness to the WNBA because they realized that there was such a need for it. Um, And one of the things we knew about that we learned about the game is a lot of children and families go to the game. It's like like a lot of kids more than and, and, uh, anyways. Babies. My point is that if 15 years ago there was still this issue about how do you bring awareness to the game, and I think 15 years later we're still struggling with that. Like our our I remember our campaign idea was to highlight the WNBA players that had ties to the NBA, had famous fathers that were in the NBA, and like creating a campaign to show the two of them together to try to have that synergy between the two leagues. Yeah. Trudy, Trudy, Donnie, jump in. Trudy doesn't want to be on video. Donnie can do whatever. <laughs> I want to know. Do you guys do you guys watch the WNBA? Donnie, Trudy, be up, be real. I, Keep it all the way gangster. We talked about this. I watch it like Rachel does, similar like in the finals. But I go to games. I go to more WNBA games than I go to NBA games. 
Uh, I'm similar. I used to watch and I used to go, but once the Detroit shot moved to Oklahoma, my interest like deeply died down. So it's been, it's been a minute. Damn. You felt, you felt, you know, I saw a graphic yesterday that said it's actually more men that watch the WNBA than women. I believe that. Really? I had trouble believing it. <laughs> like I, I had trouble believing it, but like, why do you think I thought it was some, I, I literally thought somebody was cooking that up to to di- divorce this issue away from any type of misogyny or sexism. Well, I do. I think that there is a uh, an audience that carries over from the NBA to the WNBA. But then I also think I I, I see kids and families going to the game. Um, I see a lot of women at the game. But I think as far as like watching on television, I think that it car- it just carries over. So that actually doesn't shock me. It's basketball. Let me throw back the question to you. Why don't you watch the WNBA? Uh, I do watch it in 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 spots. Um, the reason why I, I think I don't watch it, number one, is because I'll be honest with you, it was never a sport that I was taught to prioritize. Mm-hmm. So like honest. they're not like a lot of sports. Like I don't watch soccer. And obviously mm-hmm. soccer is being played at an extremely high level, right? It's beautiful to watch. But like growing up, when I was narrowing down the sports that I watch, like I, yeah. don't, I don't really watch tennis, right? Like I watch tennis sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really watch tennis, right? Uh, so the reality is for me to get a new sport and to watch a new sport, that would have had to be taught to me that that sport was important probably a long time ago. And I think gotcha. that's the best way that the WNBA can make inroads is to make sure that people respect the game as that's it evolves from a young age. Yeah. That's a good point. Also, also, tennis is an outlier in this situation because whereas the game is different in the WNBA and the NBA, it's not different in men and women's tennis. It looks almost identical. And, it, and it, it's played almost identical. The rules are different, slightly, but you can't really tell because of the way the tennis court is. It's sort of... It, the game is not predicated on the same things. So it looks almost the same. So women's tennis in places sometimes is maybe more popular than, than men's tennis. But the sports are different. The games are different. Track, same way. Track, same people way. Are running. Right. People Track, are running. You look at them run. It, it's hard to tell the difference, right? You know they're yeah. running faster than you. Um, okay. Uh, we got DJ Academics coming up on the podcast. He's about to call in. Donnie, send me a link. <laughs> Yeah, one thing. Let me see league. all the stuff he was saying. <laughs> come on, come on, bro. Rachel got smoke for you. All right, you guys. <laughs> here we look, you guys, here we go. Some stuff happened on Twitter yesterday. Uh a couple of bloggers were in the crosshairs. Do you consider yourself to be a blogger? DJ Academics? Do you consider yourself to be that? A blogger? Oh, you know what's so funny about that term now? Yeah, yeah. They gotta come up with like a new term because like blogger, yeah. when I hear blogger, I think somebody typing a word word person. Like that's a, right. You know what I mean? Like, but I guess like right. blogging is so like I like could this be considered a blog if we post it? I don't know what it is. So um, you know, blogger don't sound gangster enough. So we gotta come come with something like your rapper still sounds cool no matter what. Blogger still sounds like <laughs> you know what I mean? to you. right. Okay, so two people went across hairs. Two guys that I know, Jason Lee, we're going to talk about that situation a little bit later. And academics, DJ Academics, who joins us today on Higher Learning, thanks for joining us. You went to war with Meg The Stallion, Tasha K. It was just academics versus black women on Twitter uh, yesterday on Wednesday. Hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on, okay. on Wednesday. But seriously, a lot of people have a lot of questions about some of the reporting that you did on the Meg and Tory situation. These are serious questions. Me and you have talked about them, but I'm going to turn it over to Rachel right now so she can, so we can get off into this. <sighs> what? What you going to say? I, I didn't even like how he, he set that up because I think he has a problem with the reporting. The majority of people just have a problem with the information. <laughs> you get me? That's and, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, oh hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You don't think that there were people, I lo- and by the way, Ak, it's not about me. I looked at this. You don't think that there were people that had problems with the way you reported what happened with Tori and Meg. We've already discussed it, but I saw mad people on Twitter talking oh, about the, this. Just the, the, the reporting that, or the, the, the type of reporting or how I reported, you're, you're talking about a lot of technicality shit. The people online, 
they mad because they think that like I work with Tori. OK, they, they're not getting as nuanced as you might think they are. Now, I honestly, your, your angle, like you've worked at like, you know, a, a big news organization. So you're looking at certain things. You're looking at wording. You're looking at this. They're not mad at me. You think I was trending for like three quarters of the day because of wording? No, they didn't like what I said. And to keep it real, they just hope I was lying. <laughs> and at the end of the day, when someone else came around with the transcripts and kind of cleaned it up and, you know, may have not been in exact the same words I said, but it kind of summed it up. Everyone was just kind of mad. Every, it's like everybody's like this. No, no, I, we'll get into that. What came out was not what you tweeted. Breaking. That's how you started it off. Breaking. OK, here's so here's the first here's the first question. Here's the first question. Where'd the tweet go? Why did you take it down? Why did you delete it? And we who was your source? Said. We should say what we should say what the say tweet said. Tweet said. Say what the tweet I, said. I, I, I don't have the, the tweet. tweet the first tweet. The first tweet act tweeted was breaking. Um, it was repealed and it was revealed in court a few moments ago that Tory Lane's DNA was not found on the weapon in the Meg the Stallion case. You deleted that tweet. Why? Why? Um, and who was your well, source? Nah, come on now. I'm t- <laughs> I have to ask. I have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was good. That was good. Nah, come on now. Like you know, uh, you know, it's sworn to secrecy by um, our sources. However, I, I'll say this. I, I, I'll be honest. The the so the source in in in, in summarizing what that DNA result says is me. I've seen it with my own two eyes. OK, now, as far as the deleted tweet, number one, I was trying to put it in layman's terms. I should have just really put the words inconclusive. I ain't going to lie. I thought niggas was stupid. So I didn't want to put the word there because I don't know if they would conclude what that meant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Inconclusive. But anyway, so the first tweet, you know, I knew uh, once I seen like the whole PR machine moving for everybody else, I knew they were going to nitpick that to death. I believe second of all, it was definitely mistimed. OK, I don't know how I know, but I knew it was it was going to get brought up in court. Also, I knew it was a very new piece of information that was submitted in the recent weeks. OK, I knew it was going to get brought up. I knew it wasn't a court hearing about DNA, but it was going to get brought up. So um, because the timing of that was a little bit off, you know, took it down, remixed it, put it back up in a more Teflon way and, you know, off to the races. OK, so people know the dispute here is. Obviously, whether or not Tory Lanez uh, fired a gun that struck Meg the Stallion. Okay. And a key piece of information in this case is going to be whether or not the prosecution can prove that Tory Lanez had a gun in his hand. If Tory Lanez had a gun in his hand and they can find DNA evidence or gunshot, gunshot residue or whatever, then he's cooked because Megan seems to believe that Tory Lanez shot her. So it would be very bad for him. If the DNA from him was on the actual gun or the magazine of the gun or anything like that. Now, the results were inconclusive. The question that I asked you and the question that I think people are wondering is, how do you get from them being inconclusive to was not found? And I want to before we answer that, Rachel, you Rachel's a lawyer. What does inconclusive mean? in legal terms in a case like wait this. can i just ask you where you saw is that out there that it's inconclusive or is that just you saying that because that's not what i that's not what i recall in your tweet in your tweets or even what the attorney said where where did the word inconclusive come from um oh yeah the, the attorney didn't say that I, i'm telling you it's on the document you know you know why okay the best in the world <laughs> like that's why i know i've seen it told you i've so seen we, it so we don't so, so again, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, take his word for it, or you'll see it later in court. I saw it, so th- there is no source for that. I, I'm telling you what I see on the paper. Now, even even to that fact, like for example, and 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 again, we're we're still speaking kind of hyperbolically because, okay, the only thing mentioned is that the DNA re- uh, um, results have been submitted to the defense, and they're gonna get someone to comb through it. It seems favorable right to the defense right that could mean have different meanings but if we just kind of think with our brain probably means it, it, it's it kind of maybe exonerates him or doesn't help the case right right so we're summarizing what's that's all that said in court anything else that people are getting at me about is things they haven't seen so 
Meg hasn't seen the DNA report. You can tell clearly because she, I, I'm, I think the time she stopped tweeting, she probably made a call. She's a victim in the case. You're a lawyer. You know, she's a victim in the case. They're not showing her everything that's discovery. They're not sending her test results before the defense. Come on, you know. So why are they showing it to you? That's like th this. But this this is this is first of all, to answer your your question on what is inconclusive means, it means that there's not a firm conclusion. Right. It's like it's just there's there's no it's not yay or nay. Right. You just there's it's it's inconclusive, not a firm conclusion. That's really what it means, what it comes down to. So it's not a yes and it's not a no. Can I Go? ask a follow up question to that? Yes. And again, I know, again, you may be an attorney, but listen, for the regular people who also consume this information. Right. When if you hear DNA results are in, how would you explain to the regular person if that information could be used to convict them? If you know the tests are inconclusive, would you say, oh, yeah, they about to use the DNA to, 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 to help send them to jail? Just, just layman's term, because no, everybody was getting a real attorney on me yesterday. No, if the results are if the DNA, if, if let's just say you're right and the, the results say that they're inconclusive, then what you do is you have an expert, you bring your expert to come in and look at that report to give a, to give a, a, a better, their expert opinion, right? Which is what the attorney said that they're going to do in that. They're going to look at the report and they're going to determine, they're going to read it with their expertise and come to some sort of conclusion. And I believe the attorney said she hopes, the word is hope. And I think the problem that what people have with what you were saying is you were very definitive in your, in your you response. You said it was not found. And, and that's I not what the report says. It, it, I guess if you're saying that inconclusive, that not found is layman for inconclusive. And that's not. I'm wondering in what world that that's the case and why All you right. felt the need and, to say that. And again, I, I think y'all are, are getting real technical and real court-like on me. It's cool. What are you talking about, let man? Very, let me give a very regular example, right? If I tell you, right, or, or I don't know, say a fucking boat, like, you know what I mean, sunk, right? They sent a team of scuba divers to, like, like look for this and third, and they scanned a certain part of the water, and basically they came up and they said, listen, um, we didn't find the boat, but we can't say it, like, say, or maybe it's not a boat because you know that sunk. Say something that you you might not know is there, or it might be there, but all you could come back and say is just that, hey, we just didn't, do we technically find it? No. Did, do we, could we technically say it's definitely not there? No. Right? However, if that's I what you did, though. find it, you know what you're going to say? No. Like, yeah, I, but I, that's. I, granted, the context of that, the context of that is like, <laughs> what are you, yes, all that fucking babble, you didn't say shit. Like, like, you, like doesn't you. mean it's not there. That's what I'm going to say. So, yeah. Right. Because did they it's find Tori's possible. DNA? Did they find Tori's DNA? We we don't know. It's inconclusive. It's still possible. It doesn't mean a no. I'm telling you, it doesn't mean no. Is that right. why you Can, took the sweet? We, we gonna, no, no, no. The, the, well, well, why'd you so if if, 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 if what you said was what, if what you said what, what's that? They didn't find it. And they act, or, if, or, or it, they couldn't find it to go either way. Act, if what you said was legit, why did you delete the tweet? Because of the timing mostly. So if not for the timing, you felt like that tweet, that tweet was good to go. I'm leaving that shit up. <laughs> You're leaving it up. I'm leaving that up. <laughs> if okay. it wasn't so, timing, <laughs> like throughout the rest of throughout the rest of the day, um, you started going back and forth with Meg the Stallion. Yeah, she you and she was incredibly disrespectful to me. Meg the Stallion, you feel same. like you feel like hold on. You <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. Let me jump back. You feel like Meg the Stallion disrespected you. Incredibly. You know, like she, 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 um, she besmirched my name. She really, um, she, she really tried to play with me. You know, like I was some liar or it's, to me, the ultimate form of disrespect in what I do, call it a blogger or media person or whatever. Wait, 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 hold on real quick. Are you, are you, do you think that Meg the Stallion owes you an apology? I mean, yeah, I do. I know. I'm sorry. For what? Wow. For what? So, so, so this motherfucker is beautiful. You think she owes you an apology? Yeah. <laughs> That's the... Hold on. Hold on. All right. So, so, so here's the thing. First of all, right. Uh huh. And, and this is the part people also are jumping past, right? By the way, I, I granted, and I get it that she's the victim in the case, so she definitely has a very close personal tie to it. But she got shot. Hold on. Hold on. No. But yeah. 
the way she attacked me is like I said, she's a liar. You get what I mean? Now, granted, and by the way, in me explaining it, I said, if she corrected me on the wording, as you guys have a different opinion about how I should have put it out or how it should be said, cool. I would have no problem with that. He jumped out and made a very serious accusation to me. And I, uh, again, I know it's not it's not violence, but just like how she was able to blame Tori with allegedly her back turn of shooting her, you're going to throw my brand in front of 22 million Instagram followers saying that I'm a pawn working for Tory to cook up stories against you. Listen, when someone's built their reputation solely off blood, sweat and tears, you've never given, been given handouts. You've never been helped throwing assists. You've been just here working off straight integrity for someone who think they got a bigger platform to come out. And again, I ne- it's not like I understand where we're doing like ad hominem attacks. I'm going at you. I'm saying stuff. You're saying stuff back. At me. Cool. You know, it's fair game at that point. Because of my reporting on that, she felt so offended to basically say I'm working for Tory and then slander my whole brand. I think that right there goes over the line. You see, unfortunately, and I'm the only one, the rest of these people like in media, they're scared, they're pussy. I'm going to be honest with you. Everybody allows rappers and these people to just like slander like journalists. Like when, when you're right, you get no credit. If you make one little mistake, they, they act like you're the most terrible evil person in the world you can't play with my brand like that so really i was so offended i had to focus on her for the whole day and i'm and today's day too like you know I, we're, we're taking a, a in-depth look at her career um and we're gonna we're gonna dissect it with facts can, can i just tell can i just say something you when you said breaking news that tory lane's dna was not found that is a conclusive statement And when you say that it's not found, you're saying that he did not shoot her. And this is what you're implying. He did not shoot her in the foot. And then she's lying about that. But what what else? But what else? But what else does that imply? So you're not saying that. So you're not saying that. Wait, wait, wait. I'm saying you're implying that I'm saying that. By the way, well, you're well, you're you are. So so, your tweet is implying that if. There's not his DNA was not on the gun. Then he didn't pull the trigger. And then what she's saying, her account is false. No. Tell me, tell me how I'm getting that wrong. That's not what oh, you were implying by saying let's that. Say let's, 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 let's just be, you know, hypothetical. Let's say he did it. Motherfucker could have just wiped the gun down. Probably wiped it down. Who knows? That's not implying she's lying. It's just saying this particular fact in the case does not help pretty much anybody. And it's not like a super indictment or on, on, on did the, does it answer the question of did Tory do it or not? There's a million other things. First of all, there's a muzzle flash uh, situation. One guy said he saw the muzzle flash closer to the girl. You get me? So that's one piece of evidence, right? Then you got somebody else who said they heard Tory say dance, bitch, dance. You get what I mean? Do I How know? What's going- pe- I feel people want Tory to be railroaded so bad that analyzing a independent piece of evidence. And that's what I was saying, like, and you still going back to how it was reported, like this and third. Okay, cool. You know what? I will even defer to you. I'll even defer to you, right? But even if that's the case, that's still not me saying Meg is lying. You, like, there is no, you can't make a perfect loop of saying why Meg needs to be jumping on social media, basically accusing me of working with Tori. Okay, so here's the thing. A couple of things. Number one, just so our audience knows, you can't simply wipe your DNA off of a gun. DNA is incredibly hard to get off. And if you're going to get DNA off, you probably need bleach or some sort of cleaner like that. Now, if Tory Lanez had the the chance to set the gun on fire and burn the DNA off or to get some other kind of harsh cleaner and then wipe his DNA off the gun, uh, I, I doubt that that happened. So the, the the DNA thing is a huge, huge part of this. Secondly, Man, don't tell me this is what Tory now. Come on, you sound like, ah, no, I'm, like I'm not I'm not not defending Tory at all. What I'm telling you is that because we don't know whether or not his DNA was on the gun or not. We're not we, we don't know that. It's inconclusive, which is as a journalist nigga Think what loose. you have to say hold on, hold on. as a hold journalist on. By the way, by the way, what you hold. have to say is not like that his DNA you know. wasn't on like, the like, gun what you life. have to say like, like, is that the results were inconclusive like, I remember in my lifetime I remember in my lifetime sitting here and watching an organization that you were working for pretty hard reported Lil Wayne was dead I think I could call Wayne right now he's alive and breathing 
So can I give you an example? Can I can I can, I, can I respond to that? Can I respond to that? Can I respond to that? I'm not explain what happened. It doesn't matter. No, I'm not. Well, I'm not gonna explain what happened. First of all, I don't give a fuck whether or not TMZ <laughs> stories are accurate. I like. I don't like. I don't. I don't give a fuck about anything. But this is what I'll tell you, and I explained this to you. Let me explain you that situation. Just give you guys a cliff notes on something. Rachel is married to Brian, right? Mm -hmm. Ra Rachel is married to Brian. Rachel's sister was on here one day. Act, you should have seen it. She was on here one day talking about rim shots and all of that stuff, rim jobs, and and. Let's say that Rachel, <laughs> let's say that Rachel and Brian are about to get a divorce. If I get a story from Rachel's sister and the story says Rachel and Brian, God forbid, never going to happen. I love the couple, beautiful couple. He's got abs that Rachel and Brian are going to get a divorce. I can go to my website and report and say, according to sources, Rachel, Brian, Rachel and Brian appear headed for divorce. If they get divorced or if they don't get divorced, that story is still valid. What, what TMZ posted was sources say that Lil Wayne is close to death, right? Now, the only way that that story is a lie is if the source is not close enough to Lil Wayne or if they're making it up. Okay. So the reality is this. The fact that Wayne was in dire straits at that time, which I don't know, I wasn't even there, right? With the fact that Wayne was in that situation in dire straits at, at that time uh, is either true or it wasn't. Now, he didn't die. They never said that he was died, dead. They said that he was getting read his last rites. My thing is this. Had I been Harvey, I'd have never ran that story. I'm not gonna and I, I'm not gonna run a story saying someone is getting ready to die. But if somebody is laying there and then somebody else calls and says, hey, y'all, it don't look good, whatever, whatever, he decided he had it on the source to run it. So that story, even though it is the way it is, was still good. Like, and it's a fucked up story that they should have never run ever. But to be honest with you, it was they they had information on it. Your thing is taking a word and making it mean something whoa, else. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, great. I, I'm glad. I'm so glad. You see, yo, man, this is why I love you. This is why I love you. Okay. So, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, initially, and again, don't ask me, Rachel, I'm not getting on my sources. Initially, <laughs> what I tweeted is verbatim what a source told me. Yeah. But okay, so you so so, so the reality is that so, now, so you were so, now, so you were so now I pretty much only should have just added sources said right no sources said you could hold on hold on hold on hold on that changes the story if oh, you said a source says to say we're getting we're like you could, like it, like no if you would have said a source says that Tories they was found. Now, you'd have been wrong because that source would have straight up been lying to you because that's not what it said, but that's not what you said. What you said was, and just like you said earlier, you said you saw the document. So if you say you saw the document, if you say you have the document, then we're expecting you to report exactly what's on exactly. the document and not to remix it and make it. <laughs> act. Let, let me ask you a question, bro. Just be honest. A lot of people going to want to know this. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> a, a lot of people. A lot of people going to want to know this. Yo, Just be honest. Yo, be honest. Be way, honest. You fucking with Tory. Hold on. Hold on. Just be honest. What? Be honest. You fucking. You fucking with Tory and him, right? You fucking with Tory and them. Oh, because hold, 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 hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What does that mean? What does that mean? Is that it seems as if what a lot of people think is that this reporting is coming from his side and that you are in with him. For right. people that think that about DJ side. academics, that's for people that think that about D hold on. For people that think yeah, that about yeah, DJ I'm, academics, I'm, I'm, and now you going at me. Make a leak shit to me too. Why doesn't she? Hey, I'm just here, man. I'm, I'm out here in the streets. I don't got no. Right. Listen, I'm in the it's time in the, baby. I don't get no text from nobody. I gotta go out. I gotta hustle. That's why I gotta get at Meg. I gotta really get it from the mud. I gotta. I, I got. Yo, I gotta put the construction boots on, the hard hat on. Like, listen, I gotta go plant the field. I gotta uh, go pick the crops, fertilize the, 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 the ground. I gotta go there, build the house. Come I on, do man. everything. I do everything. You too, dude. Like, let me ask you. Here's the thing. Last last question I asked. Yeah, last yeah, question by I way, ask you. There's nothing wrong with having um uh um uh, um privileged information. That's pretty much how all No, of course not. And by the way, nah. I'll tell you this surprise. The majority of most information that I know, and this is why I'm the best journalist, at least rap journalist in the world. Um the, the majority of the info that I break, which, by the way, like you better than Elliot Wilson, I can name 10 to 15 things that I've broken that like 
come on now. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's just it's just true. That's why I can't I can't let somebody say I'm lying. It's usually because of either sources or relationships or me being privileged at certain things. Like, so so again, that doesn't mean I'm lying. I think, and this is the thing I don't want to discuss. Why? Because even if act has a contact with Tory, why is Tory seen as such the bad guy that I can't put the info out that might make him look good? I don't care. Yeah, if, but see, if it's I get not info, that you can't put it out. It's that it's, you put it, it out. But it just has to. You, you can't. You can't spin it. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. So uh, that's. It's not that you can't put it out. If by the way, you've had sources. I got a million sources. I've seen videos that the average person. I, I've seen things. I've I've had all kinds of sources from the top to the bottom. When you put it out, you just got to put it out right. Let me ask you one last okay, so, thing. Okay. Could you admit so the you, big part like she was out of pocket? No, I, I, this is what I'll say. She is in a situation where she was shot, abused. She don't yeah. want to see nobody playing with that if the shit is not real. There's trauma there. And I'm going to tell you this right now. You talking about you about to go in on Meg. Check yourself. That's not right. Think about what, what we're talking about. Career. Listen, listen. Think, all, think of, but think, but you're antagonizing her. It's not right, bro. Think about it. Whoa, 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 you're talking whoa, 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 about a black whoa, whoa, whoa. lady that's been do. shot at. Nah, this is what I like why would you, why would you add do. to what man's got going this on? This is what, what people do, too. First of all, I just read this article today. We have Lizzo who over here talking about, yo, she used to be crying while eating popcorn because Ed Murphy, Eddie Murphy used to be wearing fat suits and it's just how to make the character. For, all type of BS, you know what I mean? Salute to Lizzo, though. No problem with her. Everybody is so like, you know, oh, my God, like, let us lift Lizzo up, body positivity, blah, blah. You have Meg, she over here calling me fat, all type of shit, saying all type it's of wrong. It's wrong. It's fucked up. Comes to my, it's wrong. I'm trying to, no, no, no. I'm going to tell you it's, it's wrong. Not, hey, guess what, Meg? You that's know, wrong. You Don't call it. Act fat. Man, I'm not trending for it. Let's uplift Act. It's like, fuck that fat motherfucker. So because, that's what I'm because you're the bully. When I'm in the you're ring. You're the bully. When I'm in the ring, when somebody low blows me, like fucking pinches my ear when the referee don't see, I take it. So the point is this, because y'all just try to make her, oh, she's a victim. She's so hurt. She can just say she anything. So, you can't just, okay, hold on. You can't just throw me out there like I'm some irreparable uh, 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 outlet that's working for somebody and I hate this. No, that's not the case. But you can't you know antagonize I mean? people and not expect for people to, and I'm not saying she shouldn't take personal attacks, but you can't antagonize somebody and not expect somebody to say something back, especially when you do it incorrectly. Wait, 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 wait. here's the thing, Rachel, and this is what I'm trying to answer Van. Put it like this. She'd made ad hominem attacks on me. Nobody's come to my, my aid. When I said I'm going to focus on her, not gonna be focusing on trying to call a beautiful black woman out of her name. Not trying to, you know what I mean, play with the fact that you know what I mean she's a whole queen out here. I'm just gonna talk about what I get paid for. Analyzing music, analyzing her body of work, analyzing art. And if the conclusion <sighs> I come to is that she is a overrated, okay, um, over celebrated individual based on the music I have seen. And the work she's put down, I think that should be valid. Y'all don't think? Okay. I don't know right, why. So you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, act, act, it's time to go. We got to go. We got to let you go. We appreciate you coming on. Um, bro, I'm telling you, man. I love Meg. Hey, hey, hey you, you don't love Meg. And you're about to, you're about to make a mistake, Act. This one, Meg. you're about hey, Act. You're about to make a mistake. Yo, man, man, man. He, you know you're about to make a mistake. Why you why you want to use your platform for shit like Yo, this, bro? Yeah. When, when me and Nikki were at odds and Nikki started mobilizing her, her fan base to leak my address, leak my phone number seven times. I had 100,000 calls, okay? Literally <laughs> hacked my accounts, okay? <laughs> Tried to set me up in L.A. with, you know, someone of the trans community, which I ducked and weaved, you know? No disrespect. But listen, I dealt with it with Nikki. You think I'm like, what the heck you think I might be scared with? Like, and again, I'm not doing, right. I'm not doing right. low blows. I'm not, I'm gonna keep it music. I can't okay. wait for the only thing I said, see, nobody wants to talk about music. She was she was trying to belittle me because that's what these artists do after they use the platforms of like a me and they finally think they're at People magazine and e-news, they try to shit on you. Oh, yeah, you like a little dude, like in the game. No, you can't talk to me like that. I know the game. Like you rappers, you literally say you haven't got paid from your music. You beg 1501 
every month. All right, right. we're not doing this. We're not, we're not doing this. At, no, we appreciate music. you. Wait, 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 wait. At, we appreciate you joining us on Higher Learn today, bro. Keep your head out the Rachel, mud, bro. I come on, you. man. Yeah. Next time you come on, <laughs> I wanted to not be hostile. Every single time, we got to go at it. I just want you to come Please. on. We just have a nice conversation. Please, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, bro. Oh, oh, what, what? Oh, and by the way, like, you know, um, I, I definitely just want to, you know, there's only like four days left in, um, you know, Black History Month. I've been, you know, you know, investing time into, you know, uh, learning about my fellow black brothers and black sisters, especially, you know, of this great country. Definitely want to salute to um, uh, uh, my, my, my sister, Queen. I don't even know how I'm saying her name. Or I've been watching her a lot recently. What's, what's her name? Shahara. Ah, bye. Bye. Hey, hey, we ain't doing that. We ain't like we like we ain't doing that. I can't up the black queen. I, nah, nah, you you playing again? You doing that same well, shit? We ain't doing that. I, I we ain't book. like we 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 ain't we ain't doing that. Man, you're really gonna just stop me while I'm trying to uplift a black queen right now. You about to who you talk? Who you talking about right now? I, I just mentioned her name. I don't know if I said her name right, but it's like it's, it's Queen. I think it's Shahrazad Ali. Oh, Shaharazad Ali. Oh no, that's cool. I thought you was I thought you was about to diss somebody else. No, no, Shaharazad Ali. Shaharazad Ali is great. I used to read her back in the day. She's very controversial. But Shaharazad Ali, nah, I get it. I get it. Beautiful. I, I, she stands for a lot of values that you know I also Yeah, Shaharazad Ali. If you guys aren't up on her, she's been doing her thing for a while. There's a lot of stuff out there that's gonna be controversial with Shaharazad Ali, but it's a it's a it's a it's a deal. My bad. I didn't know you were doing that. All right, man. DJ DJ Academics, get the fuck out of here. DJ Academics. Uh bye, bro. Bye. Peace, my man. All right, let's do it. It's yeah. It's enough. Enough. We want to hear from the people. We want to hear from the thought words or whatever. Uh, let's let's go it. Donnie, cue the song Mailbag Time. Mailbag time. Time to read your letters and then we'll reply to them. Oh, it's mailbag time. Write us with your queries and we'll chime in. All right. Oh, is that loud? My bad. From at no, I burped all, again. Sorry. Oh, got you. <laughs> at all, I love all day. She wants to know, or he wants to know, what is the scariest ride slash experience you had at an amusement park? Huh. Oh. Well, there was this place in Baton Rouge, and now <laughs> sounds janky already. <laughs> it is very janky. They have combined it. They've combined it with another place called Blue Bayou, but it's called Funfair Park. The name of the place in Baton Rouge it was Funfair Park. It was our little amusement park. Funfair Park was fun Funfair to go park. to with your friends, but Funfair Park, park was not. I remember there was a little roller coaster at Funfair Park, and the guy had to grab the roller coaster and get a little running start with it to get it on the track to make it go. And I had oh, never. What? Re- I swear, the dude. So there was a little <laughs> roller coaster at Funfair Park, right? And the, and the, the attendant or whatever that would do the roller coaster, he had to grab it, no, and like take a couple steps and run with it to get it on the track to make it go. And no. I remember getting on that roller coaster and just having intense fear, not thrill, but intense fear. That that bitch was gonna break and it was making all kinds of weird sounds and it was rickety. It was very rickety. But anything that you rode at Funfair Park, which is all we had, which now they have, <laughs> it's a better Funfair Park that's connected to Blue Bayou down there. Shout out to Baton Rouge. But that was all we had. But I was scared of shit riding the rides at Funfair Park. Um, that sounds terrifying. And I would have been screaming to get off if I would have seen somebody give the roller coaster a running start. That doesn't make me feel good at all. I, you know, it's been a long time, except for we were just at Dollywood. And I think this roller coaster was called the Wild Eagle. And what made it scary was we were riding it at night. So you can't see anything. So you went all, my sister and I went on it. We went all the way up to the top. And then you just drop down into complete darkness. I it, I think it said like 210 feet. Just as a just God drop. damn. I could be totally making that up. So like it 210 was, feet. <laughs> the wild eagle is a fucking beast. It's wild. It's wild. It was talk about giving you wings. The wild eagle. 
We went straight the down. Wild Eagle. I gotta look this just up. Just dropped. I've never and and it it was cold. It was dark. I mean, we were crying and laughing and screaming. It has also been a long time since I've been on a roller coaster. It was terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah, it's called the, yeah the Wild Eagle here at Dollywood. The Wild Eagle is a beast. Twenty one <laughs> stories above Dollywood. <laughs> And takes the riders on a unique. Y'all niggas is wild. No fucking way. What? We didn't know. Like, like it's an eagle, and it goes like a unique experience that feels as if they're soaring high above the Smoky Mountains. I'm telling you. Wow. But we saw no mountains. It was just darkness because it was pitch right. black, and you just drop, and you don't know what you're dropping into. It's the it's the it was one of the scariest things I've ever been. Other than that, what's the is it the Tower of Terror where you like go up never, a couple of floors? Never done it. Never done it. And then you drop, and you go up, and you don't know how far you're gonna drop or how long. That's that's like a stomach jerker. Ugh. That's a that's a Kalika, that's a Kalika only ride. <laughs> hey man, I want to go on Tower of Terror. I want to go on. Watch this, Kalika. Like, uh, hey man, I want to go on Tower of Terror. I want to like drop down and do fucking the Twilight Zone. No, no, I want to see the whole part. I want to see the whole part. What's the next question? It's very upsetting. Von Cannon underscore wants to know. Uh, this one is a hard one. One hip hop region has to go: East, West, Midwest. Or South, who you choose? Midwest. Ooh, really? You choose the Midwest? Wow. Well, it's not going to be the South. <laughs> of course. And for damn sure, and for damn sure, ain't the South. Name if we're if we give up the Midwest, which I have elect, you have not made a decision. So that means sure. that we're losing. We're losing Chingy. We're losing you, Nelly. <laughs> you, you, you're losing. Common, Kanye West, oh, Lupe shoot, Fiasco. I wasn't included in Chicago. Yeah. I wasn't included in Chicago. Right. It's the like, you got to pick. Can we move that like, east? You call, like, like, you're, east? You're losing See, that's why I was like, a lot of people. You're losing Chance. <laughs> you're losing. Oh, like, you know, that's my favorite. Forget what, forget it. I, honestly, right. I was thinking Chicago just doesn't, I just don't think Midwest. You, first person right. I said was Chingy. So it lets you know right. how my mind was thinking. Just oh my gosh! Over you know, chance, yeah. chance, is the, chance is my favorite. That's that's not gonna happen. Right. Right stuff. Good stuff. So West. Interesting West. Okay, that's cool. You feel the West? Hey, the West. People would say that. So this is my ranking of hip hop. Okay. All times and overall shit. This is my rankings. Overall, the okay. South is number one in hip hop history to me now. The South is now number one. The South has had it for so long. The South is number one in hip hop history <laughs> now. The West Coast is second Ooh. to me. The East Coast is third. Now, here's the deal. That's a personal ranking. In terms of actual importance, the East Coast would have to be above the West Coast. All right? <laughs> But in terms of what like what I fuck with, I think the West Coast is really what blew hip hop up. And then the Midwest would be under that. Now, right now, I'm not saying for all times, but right now, right now, if you have to lose one region, it's obviously the East Coast. Mm. Obviously. Because think about it. Mm. The West Coast, you're going to lose Kendrick. Mm. You're going to lose Vince Staples. You're going to lose a bunch of people, right? The but South, you said right now. Kendrick's right not really now. doing anything right now. He's got an album dropping this year. But it ain't dropped yet. You said right now. But I mean, right now encompasses who is making music right now, right? Who is hot okay, right now. Okay. And Kendrick okay. hasn't dropped. He hasn't dropped in a couple of years, but he's, you know, he's coming out. He's been around. So right now, I would say, and you know, you still got the West. West got Roddy Rich. West got other guys. West got game. West got West got West got a lot of West people, got game. Right? But Right now, the East Coast would have to go. And I'll be honest with you. As hip-hop continues to move forward, mm -hmm. the East Coast is the originator of hip-hop, and they'll, never, they'll, they'll always have that. But in actual relevancy, the relevance of East Coast hip-hop is shrinking. It is. Unless you want to say that Atlanta's the East Coast, unless you want to give North no. Carolina, those places are the South, right? But the relevance right. of East Coast hip-hop is shrinking very quickly. Hmm. 
in the grand scheme of things, but they're the originators, so you have to have a lot of respect for them. But I would say right now, the East would have to go. That's a, that's a good question, whoever asked that. That's, that's a tough. fucking great question, Von Cannon. All right, uh, next one. All right, KK Haley 11 asks, if you could have only one drink for the rest of your life besides water, what would it be and why? <laughs> What is it? What's your drink? Besides water, for the Besides rest of water. my life. Rest of your life. Did we answer this before? Oh no. Oh. It might have to be a tie between Red Bull sugar free and Kool Aid. Wow. <laughs> the I wanted to be something. I want it to be something flavorful for the rest of my life. And it's not water. It better be good. It's the double nigga whammy. Not one vitamin to be found. Not one. Red flavor (laughs) for the (laughs) Kool-Aid. Which red though? Cherry or strawberry? No, more like a, you know, like when you get the Kool-Aid, the blue tropical punch. That's the one I want. Let me tell you what Kool-Aid did to niggas. So Kool-Aid realized that Kool-Aid wanted to, I, I have a Kool-Aid theory. My theory yeah. is that Kool-Aid wanted to get us out of the habit of identifying Kool-Aid flavor with color. That okay. the people at Kool-Aid were like, somehow this is shrinking our brand. Like, we know that niggas love Kool-Aid, but what are the flavors? Okay. Orange, blue, blue. Red, purple. Those are mm-hmm. the things. Purple. Or great. Those are the flavors. That's what we say. That's, that's you know yeah. what I mean. We say purple, right? <laughs> so they say, hey, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna flip it on these motherfuckers. We're gonna fuck their heads up. We're gonna give you a teal Kool Aid. We're gonna give you a Kool Aid <laughs> oh, so of, of berry breeze. So, so fucking good. Ooh, so good. But it wasn't quite blue. You know what I mean? It was like it was like, and you had to call it if you wanted you it. You had to you had to say. Yo, could I have so some true. Ocean Berry Breeze? Because it wasn't quite blue. It really, it really wasn't mm. a blue Kool-Aid. So they fucked our heads up. And now I feel like it's a whole generation of kids that know the flavors. But for us, it was just colors. Uh, for me, the answer is orange <laughs> juice. I like a little orange juice. But now as I grow older, I like to put some ice in my orange juice. Ew. Yeah. And water it down? Do a little bit. Because I used to be able to just drink orange juice and it would hit me. It hit me. Now a little El Harte Burn. From the citrus can get to me. So I like to put a little ice in my orange juice. Sometimes it makes a little ginger ale with it. Hell no. Pulp sucks. What's your brand? What's your brand? Uh, Simply Orange. Simply, simply. Tropicana is good. But I'll be honest with you, though. Hopefully. I'll be honest with you, though. I used to be more of a nigga with my orange juice. Just the Walmart brand orange juice is what I would love. It's very sugary. Mm -hmm. And I need citrus. Okay, what's the next question? All right, Curberry asks uh we've heard rachel mention her intention to have children is van is being a father in van's plans i don't know you know it like I, i'd like to but it used to be the kind of thing that i think i thought about all the time uh but i don't know now you know part of me is like you know certain milestones in life has happened and there have been no little kids there i got bozeman bozeman's great so I, I don't know. I would hope for hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it happens. But if it doesn't, we just ride the solo ladder, baby. You know what I'm saying? All, all about me. You know? Who knows? Deep question. <laughs> Get off, Kerry Berry. We talking about Kool Aid? Okay. You want to ask me about it? Like, <laughs> it's a great. It was a great question. It was a great Carrie question. Kerry Berry. Kerry <laughs> Berry off the top rope. Van, why don't you reevaluate your life? Think about your life, Van. I like you, Kerry Berry. Okay, what's the last one? From Christina Newquist. What's your favorite book in the Bible and why? Oh. Mm. Um, it's easy for me. Oh, go ahead. Exodus. Old Testament, huh? Yeah, Exodus. Why like Exodus? Because what Exodus, Exodus is just, you know, we put it on that ass. We told y'all stop fucking with us. We warned you. Like think about think about the, the, another. There's another lesson in the Exodus, right? God is talking to you, and you just won't listen. I mean, there are plenty of things that happen in Exodus. There's plenty of gnarly shit that happens in Exodus too. But God is talking to you. God say, "Let these people go." 
But you're so devoted to slavery and using people that you won't listen to God. And guess what we got to do, baby? Bring out the fucking frogs. I love it. What about you? I, I'm definitely going New Testament. I'm going to say Matthew. You got the Beatitudes. You got a lot of parables in there. Tattoo on my wrist is from Matthew 26, 41. Watch and say? pray so you don't fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Um, Matt James. <clears throat> Matt James. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that too. He was named um, for that. Oh, was he? Okay. I, that, I didn't know that. Didn't know that. That was new to me. Yeah. It's a good question. I'd probably change it if you ask me later. But right now, I'm going to go with Matthew. It's definitely, the, it's definitely Exodus for me. But Matthew's great. Matthew, if it was a New Testament, I would have chosen Matthew. You would have chosen you know, Matthew's Matthew? Got, I don't... It's got the most bars. Matthew got bars, you know? <laughs> Psalms bars. got bars, too, though. Psalms oh, got Psalms bars. Is a, Psalms is a good one. Psalms, Psalms is a good one. Well, Psalms got bars, but Matthew got, Matthew got bars. What about Revelation? Revelation. I was I like always scared. Remember the left behind? I just, it's just, you know, it. Never read it. Never I, read it. Can't do it. It scares me. There's something, there's something terrifying to me about no. Revelation. No. I would go more with one of the ones that like Paul wrote, maybe at Galatians, you know? The thing about Revelation what? is you like. First John people is always, good too though, actually. People Sorry. would tell you, look, we got so many people. They're spending too much time on the Bible. Whatever. From Louisiana, we read the Bible. <laughs> Stop. It's y'all's question. Y'all's yeah. qu y'all asked us. It was Christina Newquist. <gasps> Christina Newquist. Christ knew. Jesus. <laughs> Christina. Christ. She's the new Christ. Christina, How where are you, you at? You have, to, you, you have to deliver the people. There's a lot of shit going on. Christina Newquist. Christ knew. All right. Uh, that's enough for mailbag right here. Donnie was very, very poor in that segment. Really, like <laughs> Donnie don't, really, don't put this on Donnie. Donnie didn't do anything. Right. He, you're, you're right. <laughs> Donnie, that's, the, right. that's the problem. <laughs> Donnie didn't do anything. That's the problem. Donnie, Donnie right. takes a couple of days off, doesn't know how to act right. No, Donnie's yeah, fine. Donnie comes back here. No, Donnie went to goddamn Follies in Atlanta. Rachel, do you have an unexpected ally of the week? I did. Did you have one? Who? Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it not. go? Where's my unexpected ally of the week? Well, you know what? If I can't, I wrote it down somewhere. If I can't remember, it's, oh, wait, here it is. Um, Warner Media is partnering, partnering with Black Beauty Roster Partners to train beauty professionals on how to style talent of color. I cannot tell you how beneficial that is, how necessary that is for people of color to feel beautiful on television and feel like they are hiring people who actually get us, who know how to work with us, put us in the right colors, do our hair right, do our makeup right. So that's the unexpected ally of the week. Amazing. That's actually amazing. That actually is very amazing. Uh, I have an unexpected enemy of the week. Ack. No. Oh. Reddit. No, Reddit. no, no, no. We gotta go. Enemy we gotta go. Week. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna take up for Reddit. Enemy of the week. Me <laughs> That's versus not Reddit. That's, That's it. Not uh, enemies. Enemies. Can't wait. Keep talking your shit, Reddit. Peace. We gone. <laughs> uh, take the caps off, but do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye, guys.